Last year, my laptop broke and I really needed a new one. I looked around online and also went to Best Buy, but then I had the idea to look on Facebook Marketplace as well. It seemed like it could be the cheapest and fastest option. I didn't need it to be brand new and I also didn't want to wait for the shipping time of buying a used one online. So I looked to Facebook Marketplace of people that were close to me. Luckily, I live in an area with quite a few other people. I was able to find the laptop that I wanted and found one for a reasonable price as well. It was not too far away and I contacted the seller and said that I would like to buy it as soon as possible. The seller got back to me a short time later and told me that I could come over to his house. I didn't like this idea though. Possibly nothing bad would happen and it would be fine, but I didn't want to go to a random guy's house. I responded to him and said that I would rather meet in a public location that was in the area. The man asked why and I said that I just didn't want to go to someone's house that I didn't know. After a little more of a conversation through Facebook messaging, he finally agreed. He gave me a name of a local restaurant to meet him at and said that he would be there at 9 p.m. I agreed and then went to withdraw some cash. I wasn't all that happy that the man wanted to meet at 9 o'clock at night, but at least it was a public location. I had never been to the restaurant before where he wanted to meet, but that night I drove there and it was a smaller and older looking place. There was nothing else really that close to it and it was kind of away from the other businesses in the area. The parking lot was in the back and I parked and then messaged the seller letting him know that I was there. He responded saying to come inside. After that, I got out of my car and walked inside the restaurant. The place seemed pretty old and also appeared to be more of a bar than a restaurant. I found a small open table and sat down at a stool and looked around. I couldn't tell where the guy was. His profile picture from Facebook was not of himself but a logo of a sports team. I looked around to see if there was a guy with a laptop or by himself but I didn't see anybody. I messaged him saying that I was there and inside and asked him where he was. A couple of minutes went by and I still didn't see him and he didn't reply either. Finally, after about five minutes, I got a notification that he responded. When I read it, he said that he was sorry but he couldn't make it. I was really confused. He had just texted me earlier telling me to come on inside as if he was there. Now he says he's not going to make it? I was frustrated and decided to just leave. I didn't even want to buy the laptop from him anymore. The guy was just too weird. I was sure that there were plenty of other good laptops for sale and I wouldn't have a problem finding another one. So I got up and left the bar. I headed out to my car in the parking lot behind the bar and then got inside. Then I started to drive back home. The bar was maybe 15 minutes from my house. When I got back onto the roads, they were very quiet. But after beginning to drive home, a car left the bar right behind me. I thought nothing of it at first, but the more I drove, it remained right on my tail. After making several turns, it didn't seem like a coincidence anymore. It seemed like whoever was driving that car was deliberately following me, especially because of the fact that they were following really close behind, and if I went faster or slower, they would maintain about the same speed as I was going. When I got within five minutes of my apartment, I started to really worry, but part of me was just telling myself, there's no way this car is actually following me. It's just me being paranoid. There was a pickup truck that was following me and about average size. I really could just see the headlights though and couldn't tell who was behind the wheel. Finally, I made it to the turnoff for my apartment. I lived in a pretty large complex that had multiple buildings and a huge parking lot. When I pulled in, so did the truck. That was my worst fear. I drove through the parking lot but did not stop. Instead, I drove all the way through and then left the parking lot on the other side. The truck also left with me. At that point, it was pretty much confirmed 100% to me that I was being followed. My adrenaline was rushing and I was desperate to lose the car. But still, I knew better than to speed or drive recklessly. Instead, I started turning onto random streets and into random businesses and restaurant parking lots. Then I would exit of the other side and go back onto the road. It was probably very clear to whoever was behind me now that I knew they were following me and I was trying to lose them. 
This went on for quite some time though, probably 30 minutes. Soon though, my light came on signaling that I needed to get gas soon. I got really worried. I couldn't keep this up for much longer. The truck was still right on my tail. I kept doing what I was doing and would probably be able to go for about 40 more miles or so. Then when I made a turn, the truck just went the other way. I couldn't believe it, but it was finally over. I guess he finally gave up. After the truck drove away, I went and got some gas and then went back to my apartment. I was very careful the entire time and I did not see the truck for the rest of the drive. After getting back home, I realized that the driver of the truck was likely the seller of the laptop. I hadn't really thought about it when I was being followed, but it all made sense now. He told me that he was inside the bar to try to get me to go in. I went back to look at the listing and it was now gone. The user had blocked me as well, whoever he was. I was a little bit worried because originally I did drive to my apartment complex, but I just hoped that he thought it was the first of all the random places that I turned in to lose him. He also wouldn't know which building I lived in or which unit was mine. Luckily though, I never saw him again. I also haven't used Facebook Marketplace since that incident. This was something that happened several years ago now. I was in college going into my junior year. Up until that point, I lived in the dorms which was required for underclassmen in my university. For my junior year, I was moving into an off-campus house. I was very excited and would be living with three other girls who I was good friends with. The house was a lot of space. It had four bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs and a kitchen, living room, and bathroom on the main floor. It also had a basement. None of us really had any furniture, so I went on Facebook Marketplace to find some. I knew that you could usually get free furniture on there or furniture for really cheap. I didn't care if it was used or not the best quality because we would likely only be using it for two years. After looking around on Facebook Marketplace for a while, I found some good options. One that I really liked was a couch that was free and just on the other side of town. The ad said that it was like new and free because the owner had gotten a new couch. The pictures were good quality and there appeared to be nothing wrong with it at all. Now this was early in the summer, right after we got the house and it had no furniture in it at all. I was the only one of the roommates who was there at the time and I decided that I would get this couch for free for us. The location where the couch was was just over five minutes away. I asked the owner if it was available and a man named Ryan responded and said that it was. Based on his profile picture, he appeared to be in his 40s or 50s and looked like an average guy for the most part. I arranged to come and pick it up that night at 7 p.m. I got lucky and was able to borrow a pickup truck from a friend at college so that I could get the couch. It never would have fit inside of my car. So when the time came, I drove to the address. When I got there, it seemed to be in a pretty average neighborhood for being near a college campus. The houses were all old looking and fairly small. I told the owner that I was there through Facebook and then walked up to the front door and rang the doorbell. Ryan answered the door quickly. He was tall and skinny and looked just like his picture. He was friendly and invited me inside. But after getting inside, things quickly turned sketchy. When I got inside of Ryan's house and took a few steps in, he quickly went behind me and stood right in front of the front door. I also didn't see the couch anywhere. As Ryan stood there, I expected him to tell me where it was or something, but instead he started making small talk. He asked me if I went to the college and what my major was and stuff. At first it just seemed friendly, but then he asked me where I lived, if I lived alone and if I was single things like that and after several minutes of this conversation I brought up the couch. I thought he was being kind of weird. I asked him where it was and he told me that it was just down in his basement. This disappointed me. The pictures online did not appear as though they were taken in the basement. I specifically remembered seeing natural sunlight and it looked like it was in the living room, not an underground basement and if he knew he was getting rid of it why wouldn't he bring it upstairs? Ryan then said that he would have brought the couch upstairs but he couldn't lift it by himself. I guess that made sense as he was a pretty skinny dude. 
but the couch was not one of those huge ones. It was sort of on the smaller side for couches. He stayed standing right in front of the front door, almost like he was blocking it. He then pointed to the basement door, which was maybe 10 feet from where he was standing. I walked over to it and then he said, you can lead the way. I opened up the basement door and looked down the stairs. Suddenly, my sketchy feeling from him that I had got a lot worse. From where I was standing at the top of the stairs, the basement looked really dark and unfinished. The stairs were very old looking and the floors were just concrete. I saw a light switch and turned it on, but nothing happened. Ryan now moved and was standing right behind me. He said, oh yeah, the light bulbs burnt out. I really didn't want to go down there. I quickly thought of a reason to get out of there and away from him. Ryan said, go ahead, after I had been just standing at the top of the stairs for a few seconds. I then said to him, actually, I really have to use the restroom. I turned around and said that I had better go. Ryan didn't move and told me that there was a bathroom I could use in the basement. I said that I would much rather use one upstairs. Then he told me that he had another one on that level that I could use. I wanted to just leave, but I panicked and said okay. He said that it was right down the hall and pointed in the direction of it. As he did this, he moved back to right in front of the front door like he had been before. I walked in the direction of the hallway as he stayed where he was. I found the bathroom and went inside of it. I was panicking and didn't know what to do. I started to call one of my friends who was on campus when I heard Ryan walking closer. It was very quiet, but I heard the floor creak a little ways away. I did not hear footsteps, but I could just tell that he was walking closer. Everything was completely silent in the house other than the light sounds of creaking on the floor. I tried not to make any noise. It seemed as though Ryan was very slowly and quietly walking closer to me. I had locked the bathroom door, but I didn't know what he was doing. Soon, I could tell that Ryan was right outside of the bathroom door on the other side. I texted my friend as quietly as I could about what was going on. Then, I very quietly ducked down and looked on the floor. Underneath the small gap at the bottom of the door, I saw Ryan's shoes. He was standing right there on the other side. I carefully walked towards the back of the bathroom without making a sound. Then, I flushed the toilet. When I did, I heard Ryan walking away. He was moving back to the front end of the house. I pretended to run the sink, then I turned it off and left the bathroom. Ryan was back standing by the front door, but from this hallway I couldn't see him and he couldn't see me. I looked to the other side of the hallway. There was what appeared to be a back door to the house that led outside. Instead of walking back to the living room where Ryan was, I went to the back door. Then I opened it and went outside. As soon as I made it out, I sprinted around the house and for the street where my car was parked. I didn't stop to look and made it inside the truck and then drove off. When I did, I looked at the house and didn't see Ryan at all. I made it back to my house safely and felt lucky to have gotten out of there. When I went back on Facebook, Ryan had blocked me and I couldn't find a listing. Looking back, I don't know what Ryan's intentions were, but he was really sketchy and creepy. I used Facebook Marketplace to try to sell my car. I had an old SUV that I was trying to see what I could get for. I had recently gotten a newer vehicle. I knew that my SUV wasn't worth all that much and was just asking $3,000 for it. It ran fine but had a lot of miles and was older. I took some pictures and then listed it on Facebook Marketplace. Within days, I had some interest in the car. The very first person to contact me about it was a woman named Annie. She told me that she was very interested and would like to come over and take a look at the car. I told her that she could come by any time the next day because I didn't have anything going on. She suggested 8 p.m. and I agreed to it. So the next night, I got the car out of the garage and onto the driveway. Now, I live in a very quiet neighborhood with a little bit more space. My driveway is pretty long so I put the SUV I was selling about halfway down. At 8 o'clock, a van pulled up in front of the bushes at the end of my front yard. I figured this had to be Annie. Sure enough, a woman got out that resembled a profile picture. 
She had blonde hair that was decently long and was wearing a black coat. She walked up to me by the car and we shook hands. Then she began looking at the vehicle. After about five minutes, she asked if we could go for a test drive and I agreed. She got in the driver's seat and I got in the passengers. Then she backed out of the driveway and I suggested that we should just drive around the neighborhood a little bit. The roads around there were usually very quiet and pretty easy to drive on. So we left and drove around my neighborhood for a little while. The test drive went as expected. Andy asked several basic questions about the car and seemed to be genuinely interested in it. I answered her questions and I really thought that I might be able to sell the car to her. She drove the car pretty well and after about 15 minutes we headed back to my house. When we got there she pulled back into the driveway and parked the car where it had been. After we got out of the car she gave the keys back to me and said that she would have to think about it. I understood. I was a little bit disappointed but buying a car is a big decision so I really wasn't that let down or anything. I told her to let me know if she wanted it and then we shook hands again and said bye to each other. Then I went back inside of my house as Annie drove away. After getting back inside of my house though, almost instantly I heard something. Now I live alone and don't have any pets, so I didn't know what on earth the noise could have been. Then I heard footsteps coming from inside. They were in the other room as I was just inside of the living room. It sounded like it was coming from possibly the kitchen and there was no doubt that somebody else was in my house with me. I called out asking if anybody was there. Things were just silent. I yelled loudly asking if anybody was inside my house and said that I was calling the police if they were. After yelling that I backed away towards my front door. I could leave the house if somebody was in here and came after me. My heart was racing and I didn't really know what to do because clearly somebody else was inside. Then I heard the back door to my house that goes to the patio open up. This was still out of my view so I couldn't see anything. The door then shut and I stayed where I was. I wasn't 100% sure that whoever was in the house had actually left. Probably 10 seconds later, as I still stood in the living room by the front door to my house, I heard a noise coming from outside and behind me. It was coming from the driveway and I looked and saw a man sprinting down my driveway. He was running so fast, plus the sun had just set, so I couldn't get a good description of him. The only thing I could really tell was that he was a grown man in dark clothing. After he sprinted to the end of the driveway, my jaw dropped. I watched him quickly jump into the back seat of a car that had just come to a stop on the side of the road in front of my house. The car was the same van that Annie had been driving. After he got inside, the van violently screeched away. It was only then that I looked around my entire house to make sure that nobody else was there. They were gone, but I had several things stolen from me. Some cash from my bedroom, a watch, my old iPhone that I didn't use anymore, and a couple of other small things. I called the police and they came out a short time later. I told them everything, but unfortunately I didn't get the license plate to the van. Amy, that was even her name, blocked me on Facebook but I gave what I could to the police. The way the intruder got in the house was my own fault. I had left my garage door open when I was gone and the door to the house from the garage was unlocked. I felt really stupid for that. But my neighborhood is always very quiet and my garage is so far back in the driveway I never felt in danger if it was open. I guess the guy was in Annie's van and when we left for the test drive he got out and just walked right in. I learned not to invite anybody that I didn't know to my house after this. From that point forward, when I tried selling my car, I had them meet me at a local business or something. If you use any websites like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, I would advise you to learn from my mistake and meet in a public location if you have to meet at all.